Effective enhanced oil recovery and CO2 storage operations benefit from real-time temperature and pressure information from the producing reservoir and from other key units. Permanent Downhole Monitoring, or PDM, gives reservoir engineers better accuracy in correlating reservoir pressures to injection and production pressures at the wellhead. This results in better predictions, monitoring, and evaluation of project performance. PDM uses a combination of sensors attached to the outside of the well casing to provide a rich source of data without interfering with production or injection activities. The heart of the PDM system is sensors that record pressure and temperature in situ and relay the data to a data logger at the surface. The system is made up of two types of monitors. The first is the Distributed Temperature System, or DTS. The DTS is a fiber optic line that runs the entire length of the casing. The DTS monitors temperature every meter, or 3.3 feet, providing a profile of temperature from the bottom of the well to the surface. The second system consists of pressure temperature gauges fastened at discrete locations along the outside of the casing string. We'll call these PT gauges. The PT gauges are connected to each other and to the surface data logger through a multi-conductor armored cable, similar to a wireline logging cable. Pressure and temperature data are collected at each installation point. The pressure gauge must have direct access to the fluids of the surrounding formation to measure pressure effectively. This occurs one of two ways. Initially, access is achieved through a port in a pressure pad located several feet below the gauge, connected via a quarter-inch stainless steel capillary tube. This port sits against the borehole wall and measures formation pressure. Once well installation is complete, access to formation pressure is enhanced by making an opening through the tubing and cement into the formation with a perforating charge. This method provides a more reliable means of accessing formation pressure. If the charges don't fire, the pressure pad will still provide a pathway for measuring formation pressure. The perforating or perf charge is fired using hydraulic pressure supplied by a small quarter-inch line filled with hydraulic fluid. This third line runs from the firing head of the perf charge to the surface. The multi-conductor cable, hydraulic tubing, and fiber optic lines are secured along the outside of the casing with clamps and bands. Once the well is cemented and the well head attached, the perf charges are fired. PDM deployment requires trained technicians, special care, and coordination among several contractors beyond a normal installation. In addition to the PDM system, deployment needs include modified wellhead components, specialized equipment, custom fabricated casing joints, a wellbore with minimal deviation, precision depth control of casing placement, and additional well logging to confirm that the equipment is accurately placed. PDM deployment may double the time needed to case the well because of the care needed to ensure that all equipment and connections remain intact. To better understand PDM deployment, let's look at an example in Denbury Resources Bell Creek oil field in southeastern Montana. A PDM system was installed on a 4,500 foot deep well to monitor pressure and temperature for a CO2 enhanced oil recovery operation. Using this example, we will look at matching PDM to the site geology, drilling considerations, casing the well with PDM equipment, system checks, and activation. Meaningful data collection depends on proper PT gauge placement with respect to geology and reservoir characteristics. In the Bell Creek oil field, the CO2 injection and oil production zone is a 40-foot thick barrier bar sandstone overlain by more than 1,000 feet of shale caprock. At this site, Deployment of two pressure temperature gauges provides data on the behavior of fluids within different zones of the reservoir, as well as some means of redundancy should one of the probes fail or become damaged during installation. A third gauge was deployed in a sand lens 400 feet above the reservoir to monitor overlying zones for fluid and pressure migration during injection, production, and storage operations. 
adequate spacing between pressure gauges is critical for obtaining independent readings. The extra equipment mounted to the outside of the casing may create a zone of poor coverage as the cement moves upward between casing and borehole wall. If the probes are placed too closely, they may not produce independent pressure readings. At the Bell Creek well, the gauges in the production zone were placed 20 feet apart to better ensure isolation and to fit the geology of the site. Drilling operations are similar to those used to drill a standard oil or gas well with a couple of important differences. PDM installation calls for a near vertical hole that has adequate diameter to accommodate the external casing components, but not so large as to prevent the pressure pad from touching the formation once installed. For the Bell Creek well, an 8 and 3 quarter inch diameter bit and 5 and a half inch standard casing were used to provide the quarter inch clearance required between the bit size and the running outer diameter of the specialized casing joints. Directional drilling equipment kept the hole from veering more than one and a half degrees from vertical, maintaining the tight clearance without the equipment snagging or bridging out as it was lowered into the hole. The mud system was conditioned and monitored daily to produce a near gauge borehole and to prevent swelling or collapsing of the borehole wall. Multiple wiper trips were also performed prior to installation to reduce tight spots and to ensure optimal borehole conditions. Engineering design, fabrication, and delivery required approximately six months of lead time prior to installation. The Bell Creek PDM installation required both standard casing and pup joints, four custom fabricated pup joints, cable, hydraulic line, and fiber optic line on spooling units, clamps and bands, a crane and sheave wheel, diagnostic equipment, and a specialized wellhead. Of these, the equipment requiring extra time for fabrication included the wellhead, custom lengths of continuous hydraulic, fiber optic, and conductor cables, and the casing pup joints. The pup joints were shorter versions of the standard casing joints, manufactured to specify predetermined lengths four of which with the PDM attachments pre-installed. One custom joint arrived on site with the DTS system anchor and cable guide welded in place. Three custom joints arrived with the perforation charge carrier, PT gauge clamp, capillary tubing, and a pressure pad pre-installed. The PT gauges were shipped separately and installed during deployment to protect the components. The cables and hydraulic line are contained on spooling units placed near the rig. The spooling units are positioned to ensure safety of personnel and to prevent pinching, crimping, or breaking during casing operations. The cables are fed through a specialized pulley supported by a crane. Before the PDM casing deployment begins, the gauge placement depths are selected by a team of geologists and engineers using well log data. A proper correlation between driller's depth and log depth is important for accurate placement. This depth information is used to develop a casing tally that will set the gauge-equipped custom casing joints within a few feet of their target depths. Therefore, precise measurement of each casing joint is critical for an accurate casing tally. Although the exact placement of the bottommost pressure temperature gauge is easily achieved by moving the casing string, Placement of other gauges relative to the bottommost gauge is physically constrained by the length of the casing joints installed in between them, and therefore must be determined prior to installation. The casing joints are measured and numbered, and their place in the sequence set to yield the desired gauge depths. Having additional pup joints on location provides some flexibility to adjust spacing as required. Casing deployment begins as normal. Above the float collar, the first of the specialized casing joints is deployed. This custom joint has the anchor for the DTS fiber optic line. The DTS line is attached to the anchor and runs inside a quarter inch stainless steel tube for protection. Starting at the DTS anchor, a larger armored cable is clamped alongside the fiber optic line to help protect the fragile line while running the casing in the hole. 
This cable provides clearance for the fiber optic line up to the first PT gauge. At Bell Creek, a half-inch wire line logging cable was used for this purpose. Conventional casing joints are then added to the string. The lines are fastened to the string near mid-joint and at each collar. Two types of clamps are used to secure the lines along the string. Gray cannon clamps installed at every other casing collar contain a channel to guide the cables and press them safely against the casing string. The clamp is secured above and below the joint connection. In contrast, the yellow centralizer holds the casing away from the borehole wall, providing room for cement to flow and the cables to tuck in between the spacers. Double rows of metal bands secure the lines below and above the yellow centralizers. Rig crews now use specialized casing slips designed to allow the cables and lines to run externally along the casing. The slips must be set and removed carefully to prevent pinching or damaging the cables. Once the position of the first pressure temperature gauge is reached, a custom casing joint for the PT gauge is prepared. The perf charges are armed by a perforating specialist. The PT casing joint is lifted into the derrick, screwed into the casing string, and lowered to the rig floor. The perforating firing head is plumbed to the hydraulic stainless steel tube and filled with hydraulic oil to prevent trapping air. Special care is taken to assure leak-free connections in the hydraulic lines. Air is bled from the line after each connection, as trapped air or even a small leak can cause problems when dealing with a mile of hydraulic line and thousands of PSI of pressure. Specialists then install the PT gauge by clamping it to the specialized casing joint and attaching it to the quarter-inch pre-installed capillary tube that runs over the perf charge to the pressure pad a few feet below. The gauge is then wired to a multi-conductor armored cable using a rope socket. The cables and lines are then secured to the casing joint using metal bands. From this point forward, the multi-conductor cable and the hydraulic tubing take the place of the larger armored cable initially used to protect the DTS fiber optic line. All three are banded and clamped to every casing joint. Once the gauge is secured to the casing joint, the crew powers up the instrument system and runs a brief set of diagnostics to ensure that the electronics are working. As it is difficult to reverse the installation process to make a repair, operational checks are performed at every 10 casing joints on both the pressure temperature gauges and DTS systems. Between PT gauge locations, the rig crew switches to conventional casing, fastening the lines mid-joint and at the collars. When the next desired gauge installation interval is reached, the crew installs another specialized PT gauge casing joint, attaches and splices the pressure temperature gauge into the multi-conductor cable, and plumbs the perf charge firing head into the hydraulic line. At Bell Creek, a radioactive pip tag was placed two joints above the uppermost PT gauge to easily locate the relative position of the gauges with respect to the target formation on well logs during final placement. For the remainder of the hole, the three lines are fastened and clamped to the conventional casing joints. Each gauge and cable must be securely fastened to the outside of the casing to maintain the integrity of the instrument and not interfere with the movement of the casing through the tight confines of the wellbore. In the event that a repair was needed, specialists at the site had equipment necessary to make splices in both the multi-conductor cable and the fiber optic line. However, each splice becomes a weak point in the system and so more prone to failure. Also, Difficulties respooling the cable may limit how much of the casing string can be pulled out of the hole to perform a repair without irreparably damaging the PDM system downhole. The installation rate was kept at less than 10 joints per hour. Rig crews were cautioned to be vigilant of pinched cables, bridge outs, and tight spots when running the casing to avoid damage to the downhole equipment. Once the string was fully deployed but prior to cementing, a case hole gamma ray casing collar locator log was run to confirm or adjust the relative placement of the pressure temperature gauges to the target intervals. 
the log confirmed that the gauges had been placed on depth. After the location of the gauges was confirmed and the final diagnostic check was complete, the hole was cemented. Because PDM-equipped casing cannot be rotated or reciprocated without damaging the downhole equipment, the cement must be formulated to ensure infill around the PDM components. The DTS system can be used to monitor cement cure and top of cement by observing temperature changes during the curing process. Once the cementing stage was completed, the blowout preventer was removed to attach the wellhead. The specialized wellhead design accommodates the larger curve of the fiber optic line, which must not bend more than 30 degrees. The wellhead also contains access ports for the multi-conductor cable attached to the PT gauges and for the hydraulic line. The PDM lines and cables must be fed through custom machined access ports while taking care not to pinch or damage the lines or cables during this stage of the installation, as splicing may not be possible. With the wellhead installed, the PT gauges must be exposed to the formation to collect pressure data. Perfing should occur as soon as the cement has set up, as the perf charges can degrade over time when exposed to elevated formation temperature and pressure. To fire the perf charges, the hydraulic line was pressurized to the predetermined level of 1000 psi above formation pressure. Once adequate pressure is reached, the perf charges fire creating a perf tunnel from the capillary tube to the formation. The firing sequence proceeds from bottom to top. Each detonation seals a segment of the hydraulic line, allowing the pressure to build for the subsequent detonation. Should perf charges fail to fire, the pressure pad will continue to collect pressure data. Successful perfing of the tube, however, bypasses the pressure pad. In order to confirm perforation, both the DTS and pressure temperature gauges are powered up and recording during perfing operations. Completion of the perfing and final surface installation of the PDM data acquisition system mark the commencement of monitoring and data logging operations. If the PDM equipment is tied into a data transmission system, the operator can also view pressure and temperature data in real time via the internet. The PDM system at Bell Creek provides continuous downhole pressure and temperature measurements to monitor actual dynamic reservoir conditions in multiple zones without interfering with well-based operations. The PDM system required additional engineering design, lead time, and equipment, as well as special installation and operating considerations, compared to conventional well completion. The Bell Creek project team deemed this added cost acceptable because the real-time PDM data are expected to improve the picture for CO2 storage capacities and efficiencies and reservoir performance. The real-time data also have the potential to identify fluid migration in multiple zones. Better understanding of subsurface behavior using real-time data allows reservoir engineers to modify operations as necessary to improve overall project performance during CO2 storage and EOR operations. Funding is provided by the U.S. Department of Energy's Office of Fossil Energy the National Energy Technology Laboratory, members of the Energy and Environmental Research Center's Plain CO2 Reduction Partnership, demonstrating safe, practical CO2 management, Denbury Resources Incorporated, and the members of Prairie Public.